I'm going to show you how to optimize your cutoff operation today on the Mazak Minute. Hi, I'm Mike Zilich with the HEH Group. Today in the Mazak Minute, we are going to talk about cutoff operations on our quick turn lays. If we look at our screen, we have the groove, groove cutoff operation. And in a grooving cycle, you're going to use either pound four pattern or the pound five pattern. Most people will choose the pound four because the chamfer will go on the part that gets cut off the part. Otherwise, a number five, it, the chamfer is on the side that is still in the chuck, which most people want it on the back side. If we look at the configuration, when I call up a grooving operation, you're gonna have T groove out, the pattern number four, the number, the number is the number of grooves you're making. When you're doing a cutoff operation, there is only one groove. The pitch would be as if there were multiple grooves. Again, that's gonna be set to a zero because there's one groove. And finally, number five there on the screen, the finish, that's 15 thousandths below center. So when I cut off, if you look at the small picture on the bottom of the screen, that is going 15 thousandths past center line. In a Mazak control, we don't have the ability to type in a negative 15, so we go with the finish of 15. In our sequence da data, where we uh, have the tooling information, you can see I have the groove out tool. The nominal size, the 0.12, that's gonna be the width of the tool. The depth of cut, is gonna be the maximum depth that you wanna take. If I have a value in there, that's going to be if I want to peck. So every 78 thousandths, it's gonna feed down. It's gonna come back up slightly to relieve the pressure and come back down another 78. If you do put a zero in there, there will be no peck. It will feed straight down to my finish uh, point in X. Going over to the cutting speed, you see that you have 400 surface feet and the feed rate of three thousandths. We're gonna talk about that feed rate in a minute here, but I'm gonna show you a way that as we go down deeper into the part, I can have it adjust and get lighter as well as slow down or maximize the RPM. Customers, a lot of times, they will have the part cut off and as you're cutting down, you're ramping up to, let's say, two, 3,000 RPM, whatever you have is set as your maximum RPM in your common unit. That will fling the part off away from the parts catcher. If we look at it, you're gonna see a couple parameters on the screen. And you're gonna see, first off, where I have it highlighted in the red box, you're gonna have a four and five and you're gonna see that parameter TC50. If that is a zero or a one, the surface speed during grooving, I can limit that with the parameter TC49. The feed rate during that can also be affected and you're gonna see a parameter TC9. TC9 is gonna be where I'm gonna have it go down to what they call a cutoff area. And there's gonna be a parameter that helps us identify that. If you wanted to have just a straight RPM and just adjust your feed rates, you're gonna have TC50 be greater than a two. With that, when you go to the cutting speed, your surface speed, instead of giving it a surface speed, you're gonna identify it by the RPM. The starting feed rate of the groove is gonna be at the top, and then you're gonna see it's gonna drop down. Let me get into the parameters on the next screen to show you what I'm talking about. In the figure data, you see we're starting at two, start point of Z at two and a half, 
finish of X of zero. But notice this roughness feed rate now, where the feed rate in the sequence data was at three thousandths. I'm showing you a value of a thou and a half. So let's take a look at a few parameters. We're going to start with TC9. TC9 is going to be a percentage of the length of cut that the cutoff tool takes. I'm going to use an example of 10%. So if I have a bar stock of two inches, as I'm coming down the part, if I have it set to 10, that's going to be a 200 thousandths radial uh, cut or a 400 thousandths diameter. That would, that's how you establish that cutting cutoff zone area. If we look down below at TC49, you're going to see if I have a 0 or 1 set for TC50, this uh, TC49 becomes the uh, restricted or the RPM that would be at a straight RPM. So from the two inches down to that 0.4, it would be in a constant surface feet where it's increasing in RPM. But when I get to the part where I want to uh, have a cons or a, uh, not a constant RPM, yeah, constant RPM, I want to have TC49 set to that value. So you may have it set to 500 RPM or so. That will allow the part to drop straight into it. If the TC50 is greater, than two. That's how I spoke earlier that as I start with a large uh, diameter, I can change that feed rate from the feed rate in the sequence number to the feed rate in the figure pattern. So we went from that three thousandths down to that thou and a half. If we look at TC50 on the next screen here, this is where you can see that the feed rate you have it started up at one feed rate, and fifth, the TC50 is the number of times that you want to have an adjustment on the feed rate. Most cases, people will go zero one, that way they're using just the original, the top one, but if it's greater, they might go three or four, so they're only having a few changes of it. You can, can if you look at it, you can go a couple thousand uh, points. A couple other parameters that are handy to know in this, you can go to a TC65. T6, or TC65 is when I call up a grooving operation with a, a cutoff operation with that pattern four or five. When that unit starts cutting, it will automatically issue the M48 to extend the parts catcher. When the operation is complete, it then will issue the M49 and retract it. So TC65, it's the specification of the M code to extend the parts catcher. Most cases on a quick turn, that is 48. Before the operation starts cutting, if you want to delay the cutting operation slightly to give the parts catcher time to advance, you got parameter SU49, uh, and that's going to be in the increment of 0.001 seconds. So a value of 1,000 will give me one second. I hope you found this review helpful. I'll see you next time on the Mazak Minute.